Okay, uh, maybe I'm going to start the, um, from the beginning. So uh, the welcome to uh, the, our course, uh, Speech Recognition and Understanding. And uh, uh, today, uh, I will talk about the overview of the course, but probably spend most of the time for the, uh, the, uh, uh, some of the, uh, the, the logistics uh, of the lecture and so on. And if I have some more extra time, I may uh, the dive into the uh, some of the content a little bit. But today I will mostly uh, the explain about logistics. This is today's agenda. So first, uh, the, the uh, we will uh, we will talk about the, the uh, instructor, online resources basic format and i think many people actually want to know the grading policy right which i released some of the information in advance to some of you but i will try to clarify and the uh, the, the, the uh release the official uh, grading policy of course some of them can be uh, the, the changes depending on the situation but uh, i will spend some time for the other uh, grading policy textbook and uh, it, the other important part will be the schedule it is still tentative, you know, depending on the situation, we have to adjust our schedule and so on. But we will try to give you the old kind of a schedule uh, the, the today in this today's agenda. And the hope I can also have uh, extra time to introduce this course itself. And then uh, the introduce, I will try to introduce myself. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the first uh, the, the uh, uh, instructor uh, and the TA. Um, um, again, I will have prepared some kind of uh, the self introduction slides. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, for now, uh, I will uh, the introduce uh, the, what, the, some minimum information. I'm Shinji Watanabe Shinji. Uh, call me Shinji. That is fine. And the office is GHC uh, 6405. And I already picked the, uh, the office hour Tuesday 1 to 2 p.m. Uh, one hour and every week. And the, uh, the uh, please use this office server. But please use the, this uh, spreadsheet uh, and they fill out uh, your kind of uh, the, uh, the, the, the appointment uh, in advance so that we would not have a but, uh, the, the, uh, the, the conflict uh, with other people. And if you know uh, the, the Usually, the beginning, uh, the actually the office hours are not very busy, <laughs> and I want to use this time for my kind of work and so on. So it will be great if you guys uh, the, the use this spreadsheet to put that uh, the uh, your kind of appointment in advance. And I apologize that my kind of time is not very flexible, and I already fixed it to Tuesday one to two p.m. But I we will try to make the other TA. Uh, the office hours to be more flexible and I'll try to cover everyone uh, as much as possible. So later we will actually make a poll and then the, uh, the try to find the best uh, the, the TA uh, the, the office hour to cover everyone's uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the availability. And maybe it's a good time to uh, also introduce uh, each TA. One, uh, the Shankai. Uh, yeah. Hello, uh, my name is Shankai. Uh, okay. And the next, Ethan. Hello, I am Ethan. I'm a PhD student in ECD. I'm also a And the last, uh, Jason. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm also a PhD student in ECD. And yeah, thanks. So this time, usually, you know, we try to have a, a little bit diverse. Yes, but I intentionally uh, the selected all my PhD students. Since I try to kind of make this uh, uh, lecture to be a little bit more, how to say, uh, destructured than the previous ones. Yeah, previous ones are, were also good, but the, as you know, deep learning, uh, the, a lot of kind of advanced AI technologies changing our, our area. So we have to kind of update our lecture uh, the, the, in some timing period. Uh, and due to that, I kind of want to have my uh, the student help. So assign the, the three of them to my TAs. And by the way, as the, maybe I can also uh, the mention in the Piazza, um, Shanghai and the other in LTI, and even uh, is in ECE. 
So if you guys have, you know, specific some kind of issues related to ECE, uh, the ask e, uh, the Ethan and the, the the other FDI people uh, would also ask to the Yuan Kai and the uh, Jiao Tan and so on. Okay, cool. And then the, the I kind of showed you the beginning, but the, the, I will uh, the explain it again and again since this is very important. Uh, so uh, the discussion, uh, the, we will use Piazza. I guess everyone now is using Piazza, so I think I don't have to explain you know, the tool. But uh, some teacher, for example, using the Piazza campus or whatever and so on. But my case is, I all try not to use the main kind of uh, tool. And I just using the Piazza for the discussion and also uploading the PDF and the videos and so on. And the, for the grading, uh, the assignments related, we use the grade scope uh, and so on. So, uh, uh, and uh, we also try to centralize the e information in the web page, but it is not updated often. So what I will do is I will try to frequently upload, uh, for example, course materials and so on uh, in the Piazza. And even videos, uh, I am taking the video now. Oh, actually, then I, I don't have to move so much from here. <laughs> and the uh, other uh, the uh, stuff that are grading and so on, again, using the other uh, uh, grade scope, and then all the assignment materials uh, will be put in the, uh, the, uh, the grade scope. So after you guys get the Piazza uh, access, please also access to the, uh, the grade scope. Again, in some cases, uh, if we use a canvas, uh, we could uh, automatically import uh, people that are registering uh, this course. And then they, they, we can also export this information to the grade score. We could do it. But this time, I don't use canvas at all. So I will not have a way to do it. So instead of uh, asking you guys to uh, register a uh, Piazza and grade score by yourself, okay? And the basic format of the course uh, is uh, the, uh, like that. Uh, we, of course, have a lecture, uh, which is mostly kind of technical discussion. But sometimes we also uh, the discuss about the, the assignment uh, the, the, uh, to the other uh, people, uh, the, to the students, since it is also important component. And the, we will also have our, uh, the, the, the maintaining our toolkit, ESPNet, which is a uh, very good uh, the famous uh, speech recognition toolkit. And uh, we uh, the mostly want you guys to use uh, this tool uh, for some uh, the, the project uh, the, and so on. Of course, uh, the, the, you guys can you know, use your own tools or whatever, uh, depending on your kind of research uh, problems and uh, your kind of uh, the interest and so on. Uh, but uh, uh, the uh, the ESP net is easier for us to support your activities. So that will be our, our kind of a claim. And the important part, uh, some of you may notice uh, this uh, the lecture actually had a final, uh, the final exam, but we actually uh, the, the decided not to uh, the have a final exam since it is a super busy period of people actually have to, you know, study the final exam and uh, the course and project at the same time, which I want to avoid. And another issue, another issue, uh, another point is that the, uh, the many actually important concepts are explained at the beginning. So uh, the probably it's a good idea to set the midterm exam instead of the final, term, uh, final exam. So we put this midterm exam in October 26th. So mark it to your calendar. We also have a guest lecture. And then note that the, uh, all of the uh, activities are in person, supposed to be in person. And the, again, I am using Zoom, but this is only for the recording purpose. And I will not release this uh, the Zoom uh, link. And the people could not actually uh, the, the, uh, the join uh, this lecture uh, from Zoom. Okay, next I will move to the grading policy. So we have uh, four types of the, uh, the, the, uh, the grading category. 
One is the class participation. A pitch deduction is quite a large portion, 30%. And the second is assignments. Uh, pitch is also the, the same, samely uh, the big portion, uh, 30%. And we have a midterm exam, 20%, and the term project, 20%. And I will uh, explain about uh, each of the item a bit more detail later. But before moving to the uh, each of the item, I just want to have a general comment about this because always this has been actually these two. So first, uh, grading policy, I will already kind of uh, the set some kind of point a priori for each of the assignment or each of the, uh, the, the class participation point and so on. And you guys could, for example, get the, 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 the final uh, the point of the you know, uh, 90X or something like that. But uh, please remember that this is the absolute score and we will def adjust this score to make it, for example, um, the, uh, the, to uh, the harbor, uh, the, the, to consider the other people, uh, the performance and then set uh, the uh, adjustment. So, for example, you know, uh, everyone gets 70, then you know, everyone would be a kind of a, uh, the, uh, the, the issue, right? Which is, you know, uh, the, the, we were definitely not having such kind of uh, situations. Everyone is in the lower score. We try to adjust it. And the same for the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, higher cases as well. Yeah, we will try to avoid it, but pitch is very great. If everyone is, you know, over 99, pitch is very cool. <laughs> now I try to give you, the, you know, A plus as many as possible, but if it's too many, maybe I need to adjust it. Uh, the, please understand it. So this is the kind of the most, how to say, uh, the frequent claim, you know, oh my God, my calculation says that the, my point is 95. So it should be A plus. <laughs> please change it. <laughs> I will not accept it. Okay, yeah. but of course, you know, if we, it is, you know, uh, the, the, your calculation is, you know, 95, but, you know, your score is C and so on, grade is C and so on, definitely we will consider. But some small adjustment always happens. So especially, you know, A plus A boundary, A, A plus A boundary, uh, the A, A minus boundary, this is a very kind of a subtle uh, the adjustment happens. So. Uh, the, the, uh, it's, I'll say that we may not mostly accept uh, this claim, except that if we have, you know, very critical mistakes, please, of course, uh, the, the ask us, but otherwise, we would not that. Yeah. Again, this is the most <laughs> the frequent uh, question, so I just want to make sure that. Oh, another thing is a regrading request. We will be happy to uh, the, the, uh, the accept the regrading. If, since you know we are not perfect, we will have our, a lot of mistakes during the grading, during, especially uh, the, when we kind of making a point and so on. But uh, but uh, in some cases, some people, for example, asking you know other uh, all the kind of their <laughs> uh, failed point uh, the, with the regrading uh, the the uh, the uh, request pitch. Uh, just kind of making our workload to be uh, very large. So we really want to avoid it. So uh, please uh, the, uh, the, the work on it uh, professionally. <laughs> yeah, that's my kind of request. Yeah, of, of course, definitely we will accept the grading uh, the request, but <laughs> I should not make it every time and so on, yeah. Um, Okay, so next I will move to the uh, each of the kind of uh, the the, uh, the point. First, uh, class participation, which uh, that we try to change from the uh, the, the previous uh, the lecture, which you guys may not know. But uh, anyway, uh, we will uh, make uh, class participation the important component, and we will try to make it a little bit uh, interactive. So that uh, the, the, the people can also try to uh, not to be bored about worrying about my lecture. So anyway, uh, how to kind of account class participation? We will actually ask you guys a short quiz during the, uh, the lecture and even in the piazza. This is why I really want you guys to join the piazza. 
and then we make a four, and then that uh, we are uh, collecting the uh, the your kind of uh, answer, and then dividing it as your class participation. Okay. Then that uh, the, the people make claim that oh, I am definitely was in the class, but I just you know didn't do the kind of work. Uh, uh, quiz. Uh, can you can can we get the point? I will say no because we don't have a way to record it. So this is a way to record your participation. And the, we have a twenty two uh, regular courses. The definition of the regular courses means that the excluding the ESPNet tutorial midterm exam. And the term event. So we have a 22 uh, regular courses. And the basically, if you guys uh, the the, the uh, answer the quiz, uh, you guys get the one point for uh, each course. And you could actually get the total 22 points. And uh, the additional two points can be a uh, 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 the bonus, or you guys can also use these two points to kind of, uh, for example, skip the courses if. Uh, that is helping your kind of some of your projects. And the, the deadline of this uh, the quiz is usually the end of the class, of course, because we want to check whether people are there during the course and so on. However, depending on the, uh, the quiz, for example, it takes time and so on, we will definitely consider some kind of uh, the buffer. Uh, that uh, the, depending on the, uh, the short quiz, uh, the type and the schedule uh, and so on. And we also have a uh, two tutorials about uh, ESPNet to, uh, the toolkit, which actually will have our uh, the two, 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 two courses. And uh, the, you will get roughly five points uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the whole, uh, the each of the tutorials. And it's gonna be total 10. So by uh, the, 20 point plus 10, uh, it goes to 30, okay. However, this is not binary, okay? Sometimes quiz are, you know, are the two or three quizzes. And then, you know, uh, that we may actually making some split. And uh, the, the point can be actually uh, floating point. But this is all, all our points, by the way. You know, I say that this is one point, this is two points. But the internally, it's had you know a lot of kind of uh, the sub target, and you guys will get the, the half point or uh, the, the full point uh, depending on your performance. And uh, actually, uh, the, the today I will I made a uh, the already made a, a short quiz, and uh, I would like you to actually uh, the fill out. It uh wait a moment. I think I didn't prepare it. Okay. I would like you to actually do it right now. By the way, today again, you know, uh today is the uh first course, and some of them, you know, may not fully really kind of uh the log into the piazza and so on. So today I have an exception that I will extend uh, this uh, the uh, quiz uh, deadline uh, the, to the, uh, the end of the day. Uh, and the quiz is actually not the quiz. This is very <laughs> uh, related to, you know, uh, the, what I mentioned uh, for your, uh, the, uh, for our kind of initial part. Uh, uh, please put your availability of uh, in this kind of when to meet link. And then uh, after you finish it, you push it down and uh, submit it. Then I will go on to the rest of the course. Uh, 4.45, 4.40 to start and uh, should be finished in six, right? Yeah. Okay, next, the assignments. So assignments, 
uh, we have uh, two types of the assignment. One is the, uh, I would call it weekly assignment. Every Wednesday, uh, I will release the uh, assignment. And then we'll ask you to finish it in a week. And the deadline is the, uh, the Wednesday right before the fourth start. Okay. It's exactly one week. And this uh, the, the assignment is uh, more like uh, how to say, uh, the shadow assignment, I would say. So it's sometimes you guys may take uh, uh, the time, but uh, I am, uh, the design is to be finished in uh, uh, one hour or two hours, something like that. Of course, it depends on the person. You know, sometimes it may take uh, the, your time, uh, the, you know, which uh, that you guys may think that this is a good training opportunity. And this, this one may also include some coding and so on, but again, it is not a very difficult one. The second one, I will call it a coding assignment. We will have a four uh, the, uh, coding assignment. And uh, we pick this date, but the may change depending on the kind of a situation. In this case, I will kind of announce it. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, please uh, the, the, the check your schedule uh, and also consider this one. This one usually I uh, the, the, uh, assign uh, uh, two weeks or more than two weeks, no more than two weeks. And the, uh, the, it's Go from the feature extraction, hidden Markov model, which I will explain it later, and gram language model, and to end ASL and so on. And these two assignments, basically, this is an individual assignment. So you guys can just try to do it by yourself, okay? Not to, you know, copy other people. Especially coding assignment two is hard. I <laughs> just want to let you know that in advance. <laughs> By the way, after this coding assignment is done, and in general, uh, the my class is finished, you guys can actually make a speech recognition. And the, uh, the, there is a calculation. So totally assignment is totally 30 points. And the other, uh, this other uh, coding assignment is five point times four coding assignment. It's, it is totally twice. And the weekly assignment, uh, I am premier, uh, the, I'm probably uh, the, the prepare seven or eight, less than 10. And then, the, of course, if it is shorter, I will normalize or adjust it to the other uh, uh, 10. Uh, but anyway, that it sounds like, you know, uh, uh, this weekly assignment, only one point sounds like a little bit smaller, right? However, uh, the, this uh, weekly assignment is mostly used for the, our midterm uh, the exam. So uh, the working on this, uh, the weekly assignment is a good way to get a better performance in the midterm exam. And all assignments are released uh, through the grade score. So please uh, the, the check it. And the next uh, midterm exam, again, October 26. And uh, exactly this time, just using the, the, the course term, time. Uh, and having a midterm uh, exam. And as I mentioned, it's mostly from weekly assignments. So if people can uh, understand weekly assignments, uh, probably you guys can get the full point. And I may also put some kind of extra uh, uh, the questions 
which might not be covered in the, uh, the my materials or weekly assignments, but covered in the important references and so on, which you guys can actually get some bonus. And the last part, uh, term project. So uh, the, I think many people are now familiar with the, uh, the, uh, the course term project. But anyway, this is not the individual performance. You guys first uh, the maker uh, project, uh, the three to five people, three to five is generally people. Yeah, five is a little bit actually on the bigger side. Three to four is a kind of a usual site. And we have a several checkpoint. Uh, October 28th is actually uh, the quite in, one of the important uh, the, the, uh, checkpoint, which is uh, the, the, the finishing the team forming and also uh, the make a project proposal and submitting it to that. So October 28th is not just you know, the beginning. It is just already the, the what I want you guys to be the starting something. And then you know making a team, and the uh, the, the, the the summit the project, uh, the the this is uh, the the the, uh, the October twenty eighth, and we have a additional checkpoint to monitor uh, your progress uh, in terms of the uh, term uh, the project, and the December seventh, actually the last week of the lecture. And the last uh, the class of this lecture will be a presentation day. And depending on how many teams, I will try to make, yeah, make it in the poster or pre short presentation, lightning talk presentation. Uh, that we will decide it depending on the, uh, the how many teams are, the, 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 are there in our team. And then finally, uh, the, the asking you guys to uh, the submit the paper about it. And let's say, for example, this first part, uh, team forming the project proposal, proposal deadline, would be for you to write the, uh, the, uh, the paper of the abstract and the introduction. Or may also including some other the, the will be a proposal method, since you guys also propose something. The second checkpoint here, uh, you guys, you know, uh, the more kind of you know, define your proposed method, and may already finish at least some benchmark comparison of the kind of kind of uh, the your method. That will probably do it. And after this, uh, the, the finally, uh, the, this presentation and the, uh, the submission deadline, uh, you will also have a full uh, the, the, the project of abstract introduction proposed method, experimental setup, experimental result conclusion. Uh, that is kind of the image uh, that you guys can uh, the make uh, for this uh, term project. And uh, I have uh, some note about it. When you submit the material, for example, the weekly uh, the assignments or cost them uh, the uh, report and so on. You guys have some kind of opportunity to submit some document by yourself. And uh, here, I would like you to uh, be careful about it. Please do not copy and paste existing materials done by the others, okay? So equations, uh, tables, figures, it's some cases it's okay you guys to take, you know, uh, some of the numbers or figures or equations uh, from some existing references. This is okay. We should definitely use it. But uh, try to kind of reproduce it by yourself. Okay, do not do the other copy and the paste. And this basically apply to many of our assignments. If you, I see that, for example, some of your uh, submission comes from just you know copy or paste from some of the existing uh, report, uh, 
now you know pdf we can easily do it right which we may actually uh the the uh, decrease the point and so on and i think it is obvious you know it we should not do it <laughs> but since i got a lot of claims <laughs> so i will explain about it first uh this is allowed legally allowed as an educational perspective so <laughs> some students claim that you no know, legally it is <laughs> valid <laughs> however uh the, we have a lot of ethical reason uh the and the copyright reason uh we should try not to use that uh and also this is good for your educational uh the uh the perspective so uh due to that i would not recommend uh, uh or some some cases i will actually decrease a point if you guys you know <laughs> Uh, the, the use some kind of a, a cut and paste. But the cut and paste of your own material is fine. Okay, yeah. The, the, yeah I'm talking about, you know, uh, the using some other people's references. Uh, because I mentioned this kind of uh, the, the things, and some students claim that, uh, no, no, Shinji is also using a cut and paste. Okay, yes, I'm using a cut and paste of my own materials. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but uh, this is not the case, right? Yeah. So, uh, the, yeah, I actually showed you, you know, for example, for this uh, the lecture, I used uh, the 3000 lines of LaTeX to, you know, write all the equations from the scratch by myself. And I, you know, show you the number of lines uh, to this student. <laughs> to convince that you know yes i am using a cut and paste of my own materials <laughs> this is not from the other reference materials so yes um my kind of a reference uh, my kind of uh, the lecture i am very careful about the copyright by the way so some of the copyright uh, yeah some of the picture i often use yes why not but most of them are copyright free one and some of the again you know equations uh, and the so tables and so on. I will try to use uh, the retype them uh, as much as possible. But uh, due to the kind of uh, the time restriction, I sometimes use a cut and paste. So this is a little bit kind of uh, the, the inconsistent, but I will try to do my best. So I also would like you guys to do your best. Okay, finally, uh, I think this is the final one uh, the, for the grading part. Deadline policy. So that yeah, I have to mention because you know there are some people always asking. I will basically not accept uh, the extension. Uh, but you know some of the materials. Uh, for example, we do not, as I mentioned, we do not make a binary decision of your point. Uh, we will try to make our uh, the your kind of effort and so on. So please do your best uh, if you cannot finish it by the uh, deadline. Still submit something uh, that we will try to kind of, uh, how to say, respect your efforts. And the, uh, the however, assignments, I know that the, the, we have our, some issues, right? You know, the, the sick or, you know, important event that you have to uh, the, the skip. So we will allow totally five days, 120 hours. So it's corresponding to the, the, the how to say, uh, the working day in one week, okay? So if you guys want to use this one to attend a conference, uh, you guys can use it. And uh, I, but I think uh, that, you know, since due to this kind of situation, you guys may get the COVID, right? And then the uh, use this kind of a five day buffer uh, and so on. And this is very difficult. You guys already use this kind of five day with some kind of uh, reason, some private reason. And I have a uh, the, the conference, so I want to go there. So the, give me five days extra, which is very difficult for me to make it. Yeah, difficult means no, by the way. Yeah. I'm Japanese, so <laughs> it's difficult to say no. <laughs> so instead, I will say yeah, it is difficult, which uh, means no. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this five day extra uh, is for the assignment. And uh, uh, the course, uh, the participation, 
as I mentioned, we also have a two lecture, uh, the, the extra. So we have a 22 lectures and you guys can even skip uh, two of them, uh, we'll get the full point. Yes, uh, the, the no extension, but instead we have a two day buffer. Okay. And the, I think since we use a greater scope, so it is very obvious, uh, but anyway, uh, if we do not specify the time, it will be the uh, end of the day. The deadline will be end of, end of the day if I do not do not specify. Uh, like, for example, Friday is a deadline, which means the daily Friday. In the, not in the, uh, the anywhere on that, by the way. <laughs> the, uh, the ET, okay. I will use ET because, you know, uh, the EST, EDT, we can change it sometime, right? So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. If in the, 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 the now it's EDT and it, it moves to the standard time, the EST, but anyway, ET. And this is also uh, important. Um, okay. So maybe uh, the, I would like to ask, accept some uh, questions or comments or uh, the clarification about this uh, grading part, this, because this is the most important part. Any questions or comments? Yes. Is there an internet class participation student at higher level? Is there a reason why the class participation is given such high level? Um, there are mostly because we have a tutorials. Two tutorials actually having a 10 points. So other one, other than that, the class participation is actually only one point. So it's quite similar to the others, yeah. So it's, I, I say it's very similar to the others. Usually, you know, class participation point is 20% or something like that, right? But we have a 10% extra, which is for the, uh, the, the ESP tutorial. So uh, the, this is that we make it uh, uh, look larger, but again, two types of the category. One is the regular. Uh, the part and the other is for the people. And all we put it, by the way, in, inside the course. Uh, maybe it's good to actually showing this one schedule. So the all we put in the uh, Monday, Wednesday uh, in our course uh, the, uh, time. And only sometimes we have our deadline for the Friday. This is not a course event. This is a deadline. And the bottom one is a kind of a, uh, the uh, assignment related schedule. And the non bold one is the uh, regular uh, classes. And we do not have uh, any kind of extra. Uh, a participation a requirement other than our courses. Any other questions? Okay. Any criteria for successful course? Cool, very cool. And we will definitely clarify it. But uh, I usually make a kind of specific dimension. Uh, like, uh, for example, you know, whether we uh, the, the novelty or uh, the survey or having uh, uh, the, the, uh, the solid benchmark, uh, the, the lighting clarity. I think these four, maybe I have one more. I will uh, clarify it in the other uh, course on uh, the project period, uh, but we will definitely make this kind of dimension and we'll try to evaluate uh, all of your kind of work. Uh, the, the post and project uh, based on this kind of uh, uh, dimension. Yeah, sorry that I, the, it, but I think it's already somehow clear, right? Yeah, uh, but we will have more uh, the, the specific clarification about the post and project. Okay, but basically, I would say that you know uh, the the you know it, if we we this clear this kind of uh, dimension, which means you guys can even submit a paper to ICAS for interspeech and so on. So uh, this would be a kind of, you know, if we make it as a single uh, criteria, whether this paper is you know, uh, qualified to the, uh, the ICAS for interspeech or other speech paper, 
but of course this is a little bit too rough uh, the, the the measure so we will also uh, the, the consider it uh, other uh, several dimensions is that clear cool any other questions or comments yeah okay that will be fine. Yeah, but the data will anyway you just the other data. But purely, for example, uh, the uh, language the processing might be a little bit difficult for us to handle. But if we related to speech, like you know, or like for example, start the spoken QA or something like that, you know, I'm interested in a QA, uh, but I want to learn speech this course. And I want to uh, in the course term, I want to you know try a spoken QA, uh, which is like uh, this level of the variation by completed by at least you guys use the sound <laughs> to some extent. <laughs> that would be fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, depend on the situation, but the, the, the generally I would say yes. Okay. Okay. Um there's a midterm exam going to be Paper or should we upload it on gate two? Like uh, the midterm exam, do we need to upload it on gate two or do we need to upload it? exam and still thinking what is the best way? Probably we could use the uh grade score. However, I also want to um grade score is not very poor in terms of you know the for us to get the kind of uh, uh, the derivation and so on. So I am still thinking what is the best way. Yeah, sorry, I don't have an answer. But the, uh, the, the reason I again put the kind of midterm exam here uh, is that in the beginning of the work, uh, the our uh, kind of uh, the uh, courses, uh, we try to give you some more fundamental part, and even including some masters and so on. And uh, hopefully, I also want to include that kind of part in the midterm exam. This is that I put this midterm exam in this timing. Because, you know, otherwise, you know, the, all of this part, uh, the neural network part, is just, you know, some cases, just a neural network engineering. <laughs> So um, it may not be uh, the easy. Uh, well, yeah, the, whether you guys have no more PyTorch functions or not <laughs> is a kind of a, one of the skills which we try to avoid. So yeah, very good question. That, that part I am not fully decided yet. So that it's maybe asking you guys to even write it. Or uh, the, the the making everything as a uh, the grade scope. Uh, the, the, let let me uh, the, try to find a good solution. Uh, okay. But some of the by the way weekly homework, I would like to ask you guys actually solve the equations and you know write it in the data or you know handwritten is also fine, but you know. TA is not happy about it. <laughs> so it would be great if you guys write some, uh, something with a LaTeX or mass type. But anyway, uh, that we had this kind of our, uh, the, the weekly assignment, actually. Yeah. Any other questions? OK, sounds good. I think some of them we could definitely include our discussion. I also don't fully remember. I will try to remember some of them. Sorry, I'm saying too late. It's a very good question, by the way. Okay, so and the uh for the next uh the uh, this one is also good to uh, the share. So I we also uh, this make a kind of a uh, this uh, the roles in advance. So of course I will manage everything, but the uh, uh, this TS role sometimes be charging of that, or sometimes just a contact. 
for example, general logistics, probably better for me to answer it. But uh, other you guys, instead of you know asking me if it you know may take you know one or two days, you know, if for example that uh, now I am fighting with the EMNP, the EMNLP battle, <laughs> it's not easy to make time. So in this case, I may uh, my kind of a response will be uh, the late. So uh, the general logistic, uh, the the even uh, the the I uh, ask, <laughs> but this is just a contact. Okay, so uh, the. Uh, the, 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 for the general logistic, I will try to be uh, the, uh, in front as much as possible. But class participation part, uh, the Jiaozhen, and the assignments uh, also have some kind of uh, the specific role for each TA, which again does not mean that you know uh, that, that this is the only person that you know are dealing with this. But that we just want to have our, uh, the contact person for each. Role so that you guys can also easily ask the questions and so on, right? So that we make this kind of our, uh, the assignment uh, the, for each TA. And uh, finally, uh, the, the for the term projects, if we got to the other kind of lineup, again, each of the kind of a topic, we will assign uh, the one of TA to your project. So that uh, that you guys can also uh, the discuss deal with that uh, the, by uh, the the uh, with TA. Okay. And uh, I already showed you uh, this uh, the schedule, uh, but since this is important. I would like to mention this. So today is course introduction, right? And then we will gradually move into the core algorithm of the speech recognition. And the I will also put the uh, the, the coding assignment schedule. Okay. However, please note that we also have a weekly assignment, which uh, that we will release it in generally in the Wednesday. So we also have a small kind of a deadline for Wednesday. And all the coding assignments are the deadlines are applied so that it will not be over. And they, we will actually try to explain the latest technology as much as possible in the beginning. Some of you may know already uh, the, the speech recognition, actually neural network, end-to-end -end neural network, network is replacing our technology. And the, uh, but the first part is actually after we have some kind of end-to-end -end ASR explanation, we move to a little bit fundamental part. Uh, the engram, HMM, uh, and so on. This is uh, the, but uh, we try to connect it to the recent and to the ASR technology. So uh, that uh, this fundamental part is try to kind of make a balance of the classical, fundamental, and the modern uh, speech recognition. So uh, that's our kind of uh, the target. And uh, after the fall break, we will move to purely neural network. So, uh, and including a lot of kind of end to end uh, the ASR uh, and so on. And like the other uh, lecture, uh, the last uh, two weeks are a little bit advanced topic or a guest lecture uh, and so on. But I hope you guys can uh, enjoy this one. Okay, uh, let me uh, move to the uh, course introduction then. Uh, yeah, like usual, you know, the, 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 the teacher spent a little bit too long time uh, than, you know, the teacher expected. So I am expecting to finish this part uh, 15 minutes, but already one hour. So. <laughs> <laughs> but this is an important part, so I just <laughs> uh, emphasize it. Okay, so now I move to the course introduction. Um, 
so maybe uh, the, some of you already may uh, the, the know this kind of things, but the first, uh, I like to ask you guys, uh, what kind of research topics are uh, there in uh, the speech uh, areas? So this uh, work mostly focused on the speech function, right? And the speech synthesis is the kind of opposite problem, right? And uh, is there any other uh, speech uh, problem that we are studying, we are working, we are uh, the developing? Can you guys say something? Other speech applications? Mm -hmm. Speech enhancement, very cool. Translation. Speech translation, very cool. Again, generate 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 cool cool but it's a kind of a, 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 a wider problem of speech synthesis or voice conversion or even speech enhancement it can also be a, a problem of generating the free speech from the noise speech very cool is there any other topic Peak identification, very cool. That is important. Yes, yeah. yeah, very cool. Peak segmentation is super important. We cannot handle, you know, two hours of long, long recording. We need to segment it, right? So we actually have many, many uh, the speech problems. Uh, and the, the, uh, this uh, that we have to actually uh, deal with to uh, understand everything. Uh, the, of course, uh, the, in this talk, we mostly focus on speech recognition, but we actually can touch other area a little bit since they are very related. But uh, just say speech, we actually have a ton of problems. And the question, the, uh, the, for example, CMU, uh, the, the, how much topics CMU covers of these kind of areas? So the answer is everything. <laughs> yeah, um, this is probably the only uh, the, the CMU that can cover everything. You know, any other schools may be very good at speech synthesis or speech recognition uh, and so on. But CMU is the only school uh, that can cover all the kind of uh, the uh, our topics and so on. CMU actually has a very long history and also a lot of talented uh, faculties to deal with uh, this kind of a topic. And uh, let's say, you know, uh, the speech recognition is our current focus, right? And uh, discuss a little bit about speech recognition. So speech recognition, um, I will explain a bit more details about what it is. However, I believe since people taking this speech recognition and understanding means that somehow you guys know what is input and what is output, right? The input is audio signal and output is a completely different linguistic information. And this uh, the, the, the problem in terms of, uh, by the way, the, the, the conversion, this is super different, but this is the most fundamental function that people are doing uh, uh, in our area. Uh, and we can have a lot of actually applications uh, like uh, uh, the Google's, uh, uh, the, uh, the product, uh, the, the Alexa product and so on. And then the, the, uh, the, let's think about uh, the speech recognition research at CMU. Now, I would definitely say that uh, we are the best schools. Yeah, one of, let's say, you know, uh, the, the, we should be humble. <laughs> we should be humble. Definitely one of the best schools uh, in speech recognition. Of course, there are a lot of very good schools like uh, Johns Hopkins, RWTH, Cambridge, MIT, uh, and so on. And they are, they are also very good. Uh, but the, compared with these schools, uh, the CME is the, uh, quite kind of unique that not only speech recognition, but covering all the other areas. So that is uh, quite unique. And compared with other schools, uh, we are also one of the uh, oldest uh, school uh, in uh, the speech recognition. And uh, actually, 
involved many of the speech and uh, the, uh, the activities as a main player. So we are always a main player uh, in the center, uh, at the center uh, of the uh, speech research role. Uh, the, and the, let me try to discuss about the history. Although probably I'm too young to you know, mention about the history of CMU speech because it started from 1969 which is even before I was born. <laughs> you know, probably before you, some of your parents are born. <laughs> Raju Reddy, uh, the still here as a uh, the faculty, uh, the, he actually launched uh, the, the speech research in 1969, uh, around 1969. Probably before that, we still have such kind of activities, but this is a kind of a, a remarkable uh, the, the event uh, that you know, he uh, made a uh, speech research, uh, speech at the AI at the institute in 1969. Again, before I was born. Uh, by the way, uh, the Raju Reddy is one of the speech recognition researcher, and he also got the uh, actually uh, the Turing Award. So uh, the to get the you know uh, the Turing Award mm -hmm. in the, uh, the the computer science, of course you know. That, that some of them have to be very fundamental part. But one way is doing the speech research. And then <laughs> you guys have a potentially, you know, not the zero probability to get the Turing award. <laughs> Raju Reddy, you know, that proved it. He actually made a dialogue system. Yeah. And the, uh, the, since then, actually, CMU is leading uh, this kind of activities. And uh, one of the uh, notable uh, the CMUs uh the outcome is that establish the current speed research speed research technology so i will explain uh the, this kind of uh, block diagram later in my kind of uh the lecture but anyway before that uh people may have you know some kind of a different systems or combining some systems but it doesn't get the, the, the enough performance or are very complicated or not reproducible or something like that. But 1980s, a CMU uh, researchers actually are uh, combining various techniques and uh, making it that uh, one system and they realize uh, real speech recognition. Again, before that speech recognition was you know, just kind of a class classify uh, three consonants. <laughs> Uh, or the, some people may uh, the, have been working on the advanced topic and so on. But CMU is uh, one of the institute to establish uh, this kind of speech recognition technology. And uh, surprisingly, they also released the open source in early 2000, way uh, the earlier than you know, anyone uh, focusing on the, uh, the, the open source activities. So CMU Sphinx uh, is are the very famous, uh, the, our kind of landmark uh, effort uh, of uh, the after establishing this kind of tools, we also making it that um, uh, open source. Uh, there are a lot of other uh, activities. Uh, for example, um, yeah, that, there are a lot of, but the, probably one of them, this one is also very famous. Phoneme recognition using time delay neural network. 1989, uh, which is one of our faculty, the Alex Weibel and the Jeff Clinton. Uh, but Jeff Clinton also used to be in CMU, by the way. Yeah. And uh, this is actually one of the variations of convolutional neural network, CNN, which is uh, the use for the neural network. So this is actually, people call it, this is one of the representative of the a second breakthrough of the neural network. You know, there are first, second, and now we are third breakthrough period, right? And uh, yeah, the, not only this one, this from CMU, we actually have a tons of tons of uh, the research outcome. But uh, not only comes from the, the, the faculties, sometimes comes from the student activities, okay? Uh, so, and I'm very sorry that uh, I don't have uh, enough time to explain everything about it, so I skip it. But the CMU in general, we have a tons of tons of other techniques, other the 
uh, that are developed and contribute to the uh, in progress of this that uh, speech recognition. And uh, actually, uh, the, as I mentioned, the deep learning changes the game. Uh, deep learning, this is before the deep learning, and this is after the deep learning. And the deep learning actually changed the game uh, the, of speech recognition. And uh, again, CME significantly uh, contribute to uh, this other uh, breakthrough as well. Especially uh, the recent breakthrough, it's not very recent already, you know, uh, the, I'll say it's the, the, uh, five years or so, uh, the, all the kind of speech recognition it now becomes the end-to-end -end neural network. And again, I will explain a bit more about what is end-to-end -end neural network based speech recognition and what is the kind of a, the current classical speech recognition. But I just want to mention that the CMU really leads uh, this uh, breakthrough part as well, uh, the, uh, including the, the CTC ESEN, uh, CTC WSFC, uh, listen, uh, then the spell, uh, which is also done by uh, one of the PhD students uh, here in CMU. I believe CTC attention listed. Uh, this is actually my work, <laughs> <laughs> but 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 this is actually the, uh, the collaboration with the, the one of the, uh, the CMU students. And uh, uh, the, our team actually is also maintaining the ESP net which is uh, one of the de facto standard end-to-end -end speech recognition toolkit. And the, the course try to make the balance of this kind of end-to-end -end neural network and the classical uh, neural network so that everyone can understand the cover uh, this kind of program and so on. And they, uh, not only uh, this kind of research contributions, uh, the, I know a lot of CMU alumni are actually working on the uh, the various other companies. And actually, uh, these uh, the researchers are not one of them, you know. Uh, the, for example, Google has a 300 uh, the, the, the speech researchers. Uh, the, the CMU uh, the alumni is actually in the very important uh, senior director or director level position. Uh, or uh, the Apple, IBM, yeah, any of the kind of uh, companies working on the uh, big industries, working on the, 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 the speech processing, uh, CMU alumni actually are uh, the being uh, important uh, roles. So that uh, I just want to say that, that uh, be uh, proud of uh, studying speech at CMU. You guys can be, you know, the one of them here or one of them here to make a breakthrough. So I'm very excited to add uh, uh, the work with you guys through this uh, the, the, the course uh, through this course. So that's uh, the, the my kind of a course introduction part. And uh, I actually have uh, some self introduction part, but we only have uh, nine minutes. Do you guys want to? <laughs> No, my introduction may not say uh, no, right? So just, you know, the, still have a nine minutes. So four or five minutes to introduce by myself. I think this is important uh, because, you know, uh, I don't know uh, that, uh, if you guys, you know, get a lecture from some, you know, teacher and if you guys know the teacher's background, you guys can understand more about the problem and so on, right? So I think that this kind of introduction is super important. So I usually try to put it. Um, okay, so one of the background I wanted to mention is that the, uh, the I am from the opposite uh, the side of the earth. Yeah. And they got a PhD uh, from uh, Waseda University, which is famous in Japan, but not famous here. <laughs> Maybe I, I'm very curious. How many people have heard Waseda University? Oh, cool, cool. Actually, the, I know that the, it's famous in China. So <laughs> some of the Chinese students uh, may know that. 
And the, I actually spent a very long time in Japan uh, working in the industry, NTT, which is kind of a, uh, the, something similar to AT&T, yeah. And then I moved to the uh, US and still working at the company, Mitsubishi Electric Research Lab, and the, uh, moving to the uh, John Hopkins uh, in Baltimore. And then from 2021, I started to uh, work up here. Actually, I'm a little bit new since 2021, right? Yeah, I'm a little bit new. Still one year and uh, one semester. And the, okay, so super short bio. So, I'm interested in the, the speech recognition, machine learning, acoustic modeling adaptation, uh, language modeling. Yes. And the, actually I am uh, the, the known that I will, I have a very, how to say, uh, good productivity. So I already have uh, over 300, uh, the, uh, the, the conference proceedings and the papers, probably from my generation, it's quite a uh, productive side. And recently, our app usually have uh, around 50 publications per year. And uh, for example, I guess last, this year, I guess we have 18 uh, the papers and which is the, the second biggest uh, in terms of the single uh, group entry. And the inter speech, I think we have 20, 22, <laughs> 22 papers uh, the, again from only our single laboratory entry. I hope it will be the, uh, the world biggest, but we'll see uh, later if we get the proceedings, we could get that. And I will skip some of my materials. Okay, so maybe I can add, uh, the, uh, talk about uh, speech recognition. So actually uh, the now speech recognition is very cool. And uh, that's why I guess everyone wants to learn, right? Um, this actually course is growing. Uh, many people actually want to take this. But uh, uh, when I started speech recognition research, it's not like that. At that time, we don't have any application and uh, no breakthrough technologies. For example, uh, when I went to the conference, 0.1 uh, or 0.3% improvement, people are very kind of excited about it. <laughs> 0 0.2 or something like that. Oh, this is a very cool technology. <laughs> Now, now uh, uh, we have a breakthrough, a lot of breakthrough. So we often have a more kind of in, uh, the big in, improvement and no impact. And everyone outside the speech research actually criticize us because you know you guys are working on the, uh, the, the, the technologies that are not useful. So I, yeah, a lot of people actually criticize us. And the, uh, the more importantly, uh, the generally, the people don't know what is speech recognition. So I have to spend a lot of time uh, to, you know, what is speech recognition, to automatic speech recognition to the, uh, the, the people in general. Uh, like for example, my wife, my wife is working in the finance and she doesn't, she's not an engineering person. It take, took her quite a long time for me to understand what is speech recognition. Now it's easy. We can just you know, show the Google Home. This is speech recognition, right? Yeah. So yeah, this is actually the the the, uh, the quite important part. Now we have an application, very cool. Now we have a deep neural network, which actually making a uh, the continue to make a breakthrough. Uh, deep neural network is uh, the still uh, growing our technology, and we have a lot of uh, the big impact due to that, and many people. Outside speech research also know uh, this kind of uh, technology and very, uh, they respect it. And then last one, uh, what is speech recognition? 
Now, even my kids know that. So I don't have to explain about it. You know, I'm working on inside Google Home. That's it. <laughs> and the, okay, three more minutes, two more minutes. What is my kind of expertise? As I mentioned, the speech recognition and the other speech areas are very tightly connected. Uh, and one of my kind of expertise is, of course, pure speech recognition algorithm, yes. But uh, I am um, uh, more, uh, used to be more kind of a focus on the distant talk speech recognition and making, a, for example, challenge or making a, a new technologies and so on. Uh, that is what I was uh, working on it. And this distant speech recognition is quite important technology uh, because if it is working, you know, used to be we only using this one as a speech recognition. Now the Google Home, like this, but still single speaker. But uh, the, what we are now also working on is try to understand all the kinds of multi speaker conversation. And this kind of a technology is also possible now uh, based on a lot of technology. And this is what I am doing at one of my research topics. I have a lot of research topics, but this is one of the research topics. And we are also are the, the maintaining uh, the end-to-end -end speech processing toolkit called ESPNet, which uh, the have a lot of functions, uh, the speech equation, text to speak, speech translation, speech enhancement, and so on. So if you guys are interested in some kind of uh, the speech, uh, the, the, the cost and project, uh, the probably what you can do, mostly done by using our toolkit and so on. And actually we are doing that. Okay, uh, this is a kind of uh, the, uh, including the self-introduction uh, of my kind of uh, the part and the old course work. And the final uh, take home message uh, is that from this, uh, the, the today to you know, entire this semester, uh, let's enjoy uh, speech technology. I try to kind of uh, deliver exciting things uh, to you guys. So that's uh, the, my kind of uh, the final comment. Thank you so much and uh, see you soon, see you bye-bye.